Dear students, we have been discussing a lot about insects and especially till date we have discussed the damaged caused and injurious insects. But as I have discussed with you all long back when we started with the introduction of entomology that insects are not only harmful but they are productive as well. So today I would be discussing one of those and that is the silkworm. You all must have heard about silk and this silk which is a clothing material <coughs> We obtain silk from an insect and that is why the insect is termed as a productive insect and this productive insect is the silkworm. So talking about the silkworm and of course its life cycle and then further the industry related to silkworm that is uh, when we culture this worm specially for obtaining silk and that is termed as sericulture. So uh, the lectures would be divided into maybe three or five lectures in all and uh, we would be discussing the silkworm, this, its a structure, its morphology, uh, its life cycle and of course ending up with sericulture. So if we talk about the classification because we start with the classification of an insect whenever we talk whether they are harmful or they are productive, they are useful. It of course belongs to phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, order Lepidoptera. That means membranous wings covered with scales. Family is Bombycidae, genus is Bombyx, and the species basically which we talk about is Murai. But yes, uh, there are various species of silkworm which we would be discussing. Talking about this specific insect, the silkworm, which is Bombyx Murai, the domestic silk moth. This is an insect from the moth family, Bombycidae. The silkworm is the larva or caterpillar of a silk moth. It is an economically important insect being a primary producer of silk. A silkworm's preferred food is white mulberry leaves, though they may eat other mulberry species and even Osage orange. Domestic silk moths are closely dependent on humans for reproduction as a result of millennia of selective breeding. Wild silk moths are different from their domestic cousins as they have not been selectively bred. They are thus not as commercially viable in the production of silk. Now this is Atecus ricini. Now this is Arai silkworm. This is not Bombex murai. Uh, and the next photograph would be of the Bombax murai and this is a red silkworm, Atecus ricinae, which feeds on castor leaves. Now this is Bombax murai, which feeds on mulberry leaves. <coughs> Bombax murai is popularly, popularly called the Chinese silkworm or mulberry silkworm moth. It is well known for genuine silk. The importance of silkworm in silk production was known in China during 3000. 500 BC. The Chinese people knew the methods for cultivating silk and of preparing cloth from it for more than 2000 years. Their rearing of silk moth and production of raw silk is known as sericulture. Bombex murai or the mulberry silkworm is completely domesticated organism and is never found wild. The adult moths seldom eat and are primarily concerned with reproduction. Their larvae are voracious eaters. They feed on the leaves of mulberry trees. Some moths are single brooded, that is they are termed as univoltine species and others are many brooded or are termed as multivoltine. Owing to domestication, a large number of strains have evolved out which produce cocoons of various shapes, sizes, weights and colors ranging from white to yellow. If you all remember that we have talked about uh, the complete and incomplete life cycle and when we talk about a complete life cycle, generally we refer to in the Lepidoptera where we have egg, larva, pupa and adult stages 
and this pupil stage <coughs> actually here is uh, what is termed as a cocoon now cocoon is a covering the outer what happens is the um, larvae it when it has when it enters the pupil in star or the pupil stage it starts covering itself by silken thread and it completely covers itself and this structure is termed as a cocoon only one generation is produced in one year by worms in europe and other countries where the length of winters far exceeds the duration of summers some strains pass through two to seven broods and are cultivated in warm climates and then these are the multivoltine species in south india particularly mysore coimbatore and salem a strain which produces several generations extensively is utilized to produce silk because definitely when you when an insect produces several generations you have those many insects to produce silk so sericulture industry definitely would depend upon how many generations are produced and very effectively external morphology of silk moth an adult silk moth is strongly built about 2 5 2.5 cm long with a wing span of 40 to 50 mm and is creamy white in color. The body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen as a particular insect is. The head bears a pair of compound eyes and a pair of feathery antennae. The proboscis is reduced so they don't feed. The thorax bears three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings. Minute powdery scales cover the entire body. Male and female are distinct where the female is bigger than the male with distended body. Life cycle. Sexes are separate. The adult moths seldom feed and are concerned with reproduction only. Male and female copulate in tail to tail position and the fertilization is internal. It completes its life cycle in about 45 days. Male dies soon after mating and female dies after laying eggs. Like any other insect, its life cycle completes in four stages that is egg, larva, pupa and adult. Now here you can see this very specific antennae, very characteristic feature of this particular moth and the tail to tail mating or copulation where, and also that the female is bigger or larger as compared to the male. The egg. Female lays about 300 small, white, rounded, pinhead shaped eggs in clusters on mulberry leaves and then she dies. You can see here in the photograph that the female is laying its eggs which are creamy white and uh, after laying the egg the female would die. In cold the eggs don't hatch for a long time and the increase in temperature causes them to hatch faster. In sericulture the eggs are collected and stored in a cold place when the food that is of course the mulberry leaves are not abundant to feed the larvae in the early spring with uh, enough supply of food the eggs are hatched inside the incubator at the temperature of 18 to 25 degree now this is a, basically when we talk about the sericulture because we are more concerned with the production of silk so all the life cycle stages are basically seen under the laboratory conditions eggs hatch into larvae with, within 10 to 12 days. the newly hatched caterpillar because the larvae of lepidopterans are termed as caterpillar is 6 mm long brownish in color and moves in a characteristic looping manner the body is divided of course into head thorax and abdomen they are actively voracious and feed on mulberry leaves for about 25 to 32 days they grow very fast and undergo four moltings, uh, changing the outermost covering to change into different instars. Now, what is it actually an instar? Instar is the larval stage between two successive moltings in the life cycle of any insect. In silkworms life cycle, there are five instars of larvae. After each molting, the larvae neither feeds nor moves for the next 20 to 24 hours. The fifth instar larvae is fully grown and consists of three pairs of jointed legs and five pairs of unjointed stumpy prolegs. It has spiracles on either lateral side of the abdomen meant for gaseous exchange. It also develops a pair of salivary glands and starts secreting the sticky fluid which turns into fine long and solid thread of silk after coming in contact with air. The thread becomes wrapped around its body forming a pupil case known as the cocoon. 
the larval stage lasts for 25 to 30 days. Now this is the larvae of the or the caterpillar and this basically is the fifth insta which is the last insta with sparicles, anal horn, pro legs, mandibular mouth parts. You all can see the figures. The next stage is the pupa. The larva changes into pupa within a cocoon which is the third stage of the life cycle. Pupa is completely inactive. It neither feeds nor moves and if permitted to live, it undergoes active metamorphosis and becomes an adult in about 10 to 12 days. The adult secretes an alkaline fluid to moisten one end of the cocoon and emerges through it and the long silk thread is broken into many short fragments. To save the silk, now this is of course related with sericulture, the cocoons are kept in hot water or hot air to kill the pupa inside. Yes, very sad of course. From the cocoon emerges the adult. Now few pupae with cocoon are selected for further development into adults. This is in relation to sericulture. These moths are kept to lay next batch of eggs. The adult coming out of the cocoon has wet wings and hence cannot fly. It flies after its wings are completely dry. Adults survive for 5 to 7 days during which they may produce eggs and continue the generation. So here you can see uh, the adult after breaking the cocoon comes out uh, and uh, then it is ready to fly off. Thank you.